Hey guys, this is Brian. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cover the story of uh, Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry. Um, a series of events have happened. A lot of people, Gabby was pretty famous on Instagram. Uh, she did turn up missing and this was just a weird story. So I want to go ahead and go over the events of what happened. Try to put everything into a timeline for you guys. Um, this is going to be kind of a long video, so... Be sure that you've got a couple minutes and uh, of course remember like subscribe share uh, and we'll jump right into it so Gabby Petito was traveling with her boyfriend Brian in a cargo van the two had outfitted as a makeshift recreational vehicle for a months long cross-country trip where she mysteriously disappeared here's a timeline of everything we know so far about the case on July 2nd 2020 Exactly one year before they started their cross-country trip, Gabby announced her engagement to Brian on Instagram. December the 11th, 2021, Gabby announced on Instagram that they had purchased a garden on wheels, as she described it. New van means new adventures. On July 2nd, Brian and Gabby depart. The couple had been in Blue Point Blue Point, New York, where Petito is originally from to celebrate her younger brother's graduation from high school. They departed New York on July 5th on a planned four-month cross-country trip. According to Petito's family attorney, they had gotten engaged but postponed their wedding plans because of the coronavirus pandemic and decided to take a trip instead. Everything seems logical. Can't really argue with that. They were driving Petito's white 2012 Ford Transit van, which according to one of Brian's posts on Instagram, they converted the interior to allow them to camp, cook, make meals, and perform other day-to-day -day activities as they traveled. Then, according to their social media post, the pair traveled from Florida to Kansas, Kansas to Colorado, Colorado to Utah, touring and camping at several national parks and natural attractions. According to Abby's Instagram timeline, the couple stopped in these locations. On July 4th, they were at Monument Rock, Kansas. Four days later, on July 8th, they were at Colorado Springs, Colorado. July 10th, the Grand Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve in Colorado. And then six days after that, July 16th, the Zion National Park in Utah. July 21st, they were at Bryce Canyon National Park. July 26th, Mystic Hot Springs, Utah. July 29th, Canyonlands National Park, Utah. And then August 12th, the Arches National Park in Utah. On August the 12th, they had an altercation in Moab City, Utah. In August, police had an encounter with Gabby and Brian, and the pair was described as having engaged in some sort of altercation, according to a report released by, released by the police department. The police were called to reports of disorderly conduct on August the 12th and encountered Brian and Gabby along with the witness whose full name was redacted from the report. Brian and Gabby were described as having gotten into a physical fight following an argument, but both the male and female reported that they were in love and engaged to be married desperately and didn't wish to see anyone charged with the crime, according to the report from Officer Eric Pratt. Now, I don't know about where you come from, but where I come from, and I've lived a lot of places, anytime there's a domestic dispute, um, if there's any indication of one person assaulting another person, somebody always goes to jail. I'm not sure if they had some type of privilege or what the situation was, but for some reason, nobody was arrested there. Um, and the outcome of this story could have been a lot different had someone maybe been arrested. So, at the officer's suggestion, Brian and Gabby separated for the night, the report said, 
Gabby is described by one officer as confused and emotional. After evaluating the totality of the circumstances, I do not believe the situation escalated to a level of domestic assault as much that of a mental health crisis, Officer Daniel Robbins wrote in his police report. There were no charges filed. Robbins wrote, Brian and the pair have been traveling together for the last four or five months. So between August 17th and the 23rd, Brian actually flies to Florida. Brian's family attorney, Stephen Vetrilinoli, confirms Brian flew home to Tampa from Salt Lake City on August 17th and flew back to Salt Lake City on August the 23rd. Uh, so that's a total of nine days to rejoin Gabby. The family attorney says Brian flew home to obtain some items and empty and close the couple's storage unit to save some money as they were contemplating on extending the road trip at that time. The family lawyer says the couple paid for the flights together as they were sharing expenses, which makes sense. Uh, my wife and I have you know, been together for 13 years. We share all of our expenses. You know, I make the money, she spends it. You know, it's 50-50, right? But that's just the way it is. And I'm not complaining by any means. So, on August the 27th, there was a fight at a Wyoming restaurant. A woman named Nina Seely Angelo took to her Instagram saying she witnessed Gabby and Brian getting into an explosive argument at the Mary Piglet restaurant in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. She said Brian was screaming at the hostess and Gabby was in tears and apologizing to the staff. It looked as if they were almost getting kicked out. Angelo told ABC News, it wasn't necessarily between them. It was more so Gabby abruptly leaving the restaurant crying, and Brian was just evidently really upset or pissed off, uh, she would say. I would say Gabby was upset, he was angry, and he was just being very temperamental towards the restaurant staff. Angelo said Brian was very visibly angry and Gabby seemed distraught. This is the last known sighting of the couple together. So on August the 30th was the last communication with the family. And we're not even sure if the communication was actually from Gabby, as you'll gather in the next minute or two. So Gabby's mother, Nicole Smith, said the last text message she received from her daughter came on August the 30th. She said she was unsure if it was her daughter who actually sent those messages. According to a warrant filed by the Northport Police Department weeks later, a detective wrote that Gabby's mother received an odd text message from Gabby. The text message read, Can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. The reference to Stan was regarding her grandfather, but her her, the mother, she never called him Stan. No one in the family referred to him as Stan. The mother was concerned that something was wrong with her daughter, as she should be. And me as a parent, at that point in time, I would have been on the lookout. I would have been on the hunt. But if we're speaking in actuality, it was probably already too late at that time. Her family said that the final message was not normal behavior. For Gabby and became more worried about her according to the police. So on September the 1st, two days later, Brian returns to Northport. Brian allegedly returned to the Northport home he and Gabby shared with his parents on September the 1st. However, Gabby wasn't with him. Police said he had driven the couple's van there and Gabby, like I just said, wasn't with him. So finally, 10 days later, on September the 11th, Gabby's family reports her missing. So on September the 11th, Gabby's, Gabby's family reported her missing to the Suffolk County Police Department in New York at approximately 6.55 p.m. When the police in Florida knocked on Brian's door that night, his parents handed them a lawyer's phone number, which should have been major, major, major red flag at that point. Um, we don't know what Brian knows. That's the bottom line, Brian's mother said. We are hopeful to talk to him. He needs to talk to us. We need to know exactly where he was. 
where she was, the last locations, and the fact that he was back here 10 days ago and the family reported her missing 10 days ago. Their van was processed for evidence and Taylor said there were some materials that would be investigated farther. On September 15th, Brian was named a person of interest, which is way too late if you ask me, but what do I know? So on Wednesday, Brian was officially named a person of interest in Gabby's disappearance at Northport. And Northport police said he was hindering the investigation. Of course he was. Brian had not yet made himself available available to be interviewed by investigators or provided any helpful details whatsoever. His attorney issued the following statement on behalf of his client, addressing Brian's silence. Many people are wondering why Brian would not make a statement or speak with law enforcement in the face of Gabby's absence. In my experience, legitimate partners are often the first person law enforcement focuses their attention on in cases like this, which is true. And the warning that any statement made will be used against you is true. That is also true. Regardless of whether or not my client had Anything to do with Gabby's disappearance, as such, on the advice of counsel, Brian is not speaking on the matter. So he's already had a lawyer that he's talked to with about this situation. I have been informed that the Northport Florida Police have named Brian as a person of interest in the matter. This formally has not been really changed the circumstance of Brian being the focus of attention of law enforcement, as he was always, you know, the primary person of interest, and Brian will continue to remain silent on the advice of his counsel. So on September 16th, Northport press conference with Gabby's father, uh, police in Northport held a news conference during which Gabby's father begged for her safe return and for Brian to speak up and stop hindering the investigation. Later, Gabby... Gabby's family attorney, Richard Stafford, read aloud a letter to Brian's parents pleading that their son please speak with them about Gabby's disappearance. Disappearance. On September 16th into the 17th, uh, Brian's sister actually speaks to Good Morning America. Hours after the family of 22-year-old Gabby Petito issued a statement to the family of her fiancé begging for information in the disappearance, Brian's sister, Cassie, actually broke her silence in an exclusive interview with GMA and said, obviously, me and the family want Gabby to be found safe. She said she's like a sister and my children love her and all I want for her to do is come home safe and found and this just to be a big misunderstanding. That's what we all wanted at that point in time. Everybody wanted it to be a misunderstanding because we already all kind of knew. So on September the 17th, there was a double homicide in Utah announced Friday that Gabby's case was no connection and it was not related to the double homicide case involving Crystal Turner and Kayleen Schultz, which, you know, kept Gabby's family's hopes up. However, on the 17th, Brian's family also reported him missing. Police said... Brian's attorney contacted authorities Friday because the family wanted to discuss his disappearance. They claim they haven't seen Brian since Tuesday. They removed item from Brian's house to assist in the search for him, according to his attorney, Stephen Bartolino. Now, one thing about Brian that never comes out in this story, at least I don't remember it coming out, is that they were both people of nature. They knew how to live off of the grid. They knew basically how to survive outside of a normal environment. Uh, police said on Twitter that it was the first time that Brian's family had spoken with them in detail about the case when his son comes up missing, supposedly. Now, a lot of people believe that Brian's parents actually snuck him into a van late at night, got him a bunch of supplies and cash, and drove him and dropped him off somewhere. Uh, both he and Gabby are now considered missing persons. 
on September the 18th, the search begins for Brian as well. Police searched the vast Florida Wildlife Reserve on Saturday for 23-year-old Brian Laundrie, a person of interest in the disappearance of his girlfriend, Gabrielle Petito. No, she goes by Gabby. While across the country, the FBI hunted for clues for the missing woman in a mountainous national park in Wyoming. The search was called off Saturday night by Northport police due to the darkness, and they say nothing was found that night. It was just too dark to search for anything. Meanwhile, the FBI in Denver said Saturday that agents were conducting ground surveys at Grand Tenton National Park in Wyoming. With help from the National Park Service and local law enforcement agencies seeking clues to Petito's disappearance. Her last known contact with family members was from the National Park known for its mountainous terrain, or at least what they would suspect was the last known contact. September 19th, there was a body found in Wyoming, believed to be that of Gabby Petito. Authorities say a body discovered on Sunday in Wyoming was believed to be that of Gabby Petito. The FBI said that the body was found by law enforcement agents who had spent the past two days searching the campgrounds. An FBI agent said the cause of death had yet to been determined, or at least they didn't want to release anything at that point in time. Gabby's family was notified. She did post, he did post, Gabby's father did post a tweet with a picture of hers basically saying that she touched the world. Brian has been identified as a person, a person of interest in the case. He was last seen by his family in Florida on Tuesday and investigators 